We're going to go ahead and get started. I am going to turn the program over to Don Hollister, who um, is our coordinator for the community services. Uh, I'm sorry, the community um, conversation uh, schedules. And I know other people are going to be coming in, but just uh, then we can go ahead and get started. So Don, you want to introduce our speaker? Uh, well, I could spend half an hour yeah. introducing Jerry Sutton. He, uh, he's a member of the McKee Association, a uh, longtime administrator, a top administrator at Wright Patterson, uh, and has been involved in local civic uh, affairs. He was a candidate for county commission maybe 10 years ago. And uh, so he, he has a kind of an intimate uh, background to the this technical situation we're faced with, uh, and what uh, Carol Young said, I I agree. This is a pretty profound issue that we face every ten years. How to redraw the lines, and I'm glad you're here, Jerry and Kim. Glad to be here, trying to get the word out. Hmm. We ready to go? You're hey, on. Ready, jump right in. Thank you. Okay. I'm sharing the screen and I will do a PowerPoint presentation and the narrative. And you're recording, I believe, uh, Paul, right? And can share a link. Yes, I believe that's the case. Okay. Fair Districting uh, is an activity uh, that's co-sponsored by the League of Women Voter and Common Cause Ohio with, in coalition with a number of other organizations. Uh, they've been try promoting voter integrity, voter uh, empowerment for a number of years, and we will talk about some of those things. One of the big things they did back a couple of years ago were promote a couple of constitutional amendments to the state constitution. They passed overwhelmingly uh, in all 88 counties and they set forth some criteria both for the state house redistricting and the congressional district redistricting to as to how we go about doing this in a fair nonpartisan manner. And we will get into that. So as I said, this is what we're gonna do. What is redistricting? Why is it important? New rules and timelines that are coming up. And then most importantly, how you can get involved and how you can help. First of all, we start with redistricting or reapportionment. As you know, the gross census data came out uh, and in New York Times in April, uh, they indicated what was the, uh, going to be the uh, reapportionment of the 435 seats in Congress. As you know, each state gets one seat and then the rest is apportioned according to population. Even though Ohio increased its population during the last 10 years by about a little over 2%, other people grew more. So we lost a seat. You may recall last time we reapportioned, we lost uh, Steve Austria's seat, who was then our uh, rep. Uh, so we're at it again. So that is a basis by which we get into uh, a lot of the redistricting. First of all, we'll look at the state level. We don't have a reapportionment issue in Ohio because by constitution, there's a fixed number of senators and representatives. So no reapportionment. But, and if you glance at these maps, you can see that each uh, Senate district is composed to a, most, most of the time, three House districts since there are 33 senators and 99 representatives. So what is redistricting? Uh, Don alluded to it in your 
X, you you draw take a snapshot of your population and then draw it so that there are equal number of people in each of the districts and they can then elect their representative. During the intervening two, 10 years, people move, die, whatever, and the, the population shifts. So the next 10, next cycle, 10 years later, you take a snapshot and redraw the lines to include equal number of people in each of the districts. If we try, looked at a generic population, just as an example of uh, cats and dogs, assuming they were geographically uh, somewhat segregated, you could draw a very fair uh, representative district, assuming you had a representative democracy. And each district in the vertical uh, districts, you would have three dogs and uh, two cat representatives, looks fair. But if the dogs are drawing the map, they would want to do it horizontally. So suddenly you have five dog districts, zero cat districts. Then if by some fluke, the cats came in power and had the opportunity to draw the map, you can see they could manipulate it so that they would have the majority and the dogs would be left out. This is called gerrymandering. It's an ancient practice, been around since there have been representative democracies. Uh, but the problem is they create safe districts, predicted outcomes, uh, and a lot of people feel disenfranchised. Uh, I was at a, a League of Women Voters luncheon a couple of years ago. My, they were introducing candidates and my state rep was speaking and he pointed at me in front of the crowd and says, Jerry Sutton, you live in Yellow Springs. Your vote doesn't count. I was a little offended. I but guess. that's what you mean by having uh, disenfranchised people are feeling like you're being disengaged. And it also leads to dysfunctional government as witnessed by our current US Rep House of Representatives and Congress in general. Okay, this is our congressional map in Ohio. You notice there are some similarities between that and the old gerrymandering map. Uh, we'll get into some of these, but uh, Mr. Jordan's map, the number four there, you can see he uh, has kind of a unique situation. He's got uh, runs from Urbana to the gates of Cleveland and ziggy zags uh, all the way along. Others are just as bad from Mahoning County down to Sahota County along the Ohio River, almost the entire length in Ohio. So it is not balanced. So we'll get into that a little more. Voting wise, uh, the Democrats and Republicans vote are, are split pretty much as you say, about 55% of the people vote Republican, 45% Democrat. Now, if you look at Green County, 65% of the people are unaffiliated. They have not uh, registered in one of the primaries. And in, in how you register whether Republican or Democrat is you go to the primary and you request a ballot for that party. And that makes you one or the other. But as far as a congressional setup, only 25% of the representatives are Democrat and 75% are Republican. That is four Democratic seats of the 16 and 12 Republicans. In the intervening five uh, elections, that has since the last apportionment or redistricting, that has not changed. 
There has not been any of the districts that have been flipped during that time. So when I said predictable, that is predictable. Okay, the state uh, house is a little different. Uh, about 64% of the seats, uh, there are 132 seats in the state house, uh, 33, as we said earlier, 33 Senate and the rest house. 64% of that is Republicans, the balance Democrats. Okay, now we'll talk about gerrymandering. And we'll use an example, District 9, which is finally referred to as a snake in a lake. That's a Democratic district. Mary Kep Kepter, uh, if she wanted to go from Toledo to uh, Cleveland, she would have to leave her district or take a ferry because her district is composed of fragments of five separate counties. There is not one whole county in her district. In fact, there's not one whole county in any of the Democratic districts. They just have fragments of one or two counties. Another example is down in Hamilton County. Hamilton used to be in play. It is swing one way or the other, depending on the deal. The last reapportionment, they cracked Hamilton County, peanut buttered on Warren County to District 1, and ensured that that is a Republican. Mr. Shabbat has that, and uh, has been. To, to bridge that, to give you a little example in the lower left, that little bridge there is only one lot deep. It's part of a block <laughs> along a road, and that's to get from one part to another. The other, District 2, is Mr. Westrup, uh, and that extends clear over to Sahota County. So reliable Republican districts, both of them. An example of uh, the impact. In 08, the presidential election in the prior redistricting configuration, District 15 was composed as that on the left. Two uh, counties plus a fraction of Franklin. And Obama uh, won that by 54%. Then they redistrict a new 15. And you can see what they added, almost going all the way to the Ohio River in Athens County. Compiling those votes using the numbers from 08, the 15th district would have gone for uh, Mr. McCain by about the same amount as you know, it would have uh, basically reversed the statistics. So where, what has changed? We had those two constitutional amendments, nothing has changed. No lines have drawn. It is this year that we have to redraw those uh, lines and it has to be done in time to support the primary election for the 2022 primary election. And by the time candidates file or, put, or gather the signatures, file the petitions, uh, print the ballots, have the primary election. It takes a little lead time to make that happen. It, we need to remind the, the state house that we are watching, they need to get busy. So here's some criteria that apply to both the state house and the congressional, US congressional. They must be contiguous. They must be all in one piece. That District 9 of five fragments in, that aren't connected doesn't match that test at all. Uh, so there's a couple of examples of contiguous. Also, there's criteria that says keep counties, cities, and township whole if possible. But definitely because these are 
increments of government, lower level government, building blocks, if you will. And they felt they should be, have some integrity. It also requires public hearings. And later we'll amplify on where you can sign up to get notices where public hearings are and you, the public, need to go and let your preferences known. known. Here's some more rules for the Ohio House and Senate. Uh, nesting. The maps right now are pretty much uh, three House districts for every uh, Senate district. And then that next statement, anti-gerrymandering rule is a little aspirational. Uh, no plan shall be drawn to favor or dis disfavor a political party. We'll see how it works out and you'll see some of the criteria later. Representative, representative fairness, that means you should be able to demonstrate that you are ensuring that things are pretty much like they have been as far as voter results. But needless to say, there's a lot of verbiage and a lot of areas to argue about there. So a new innovation that is, pertains to both of these is the Ohio Redistricting Commission. It designates what offices have a seat at the table during this redistricting. Uh, and those are the current occupiers. As you can see where you have in the Senate and House, the speaker, the majority leader and the minority leader, you notice that at least two of the seven people are going to be in a minority party. And that's by design to ensure that it is a bipartisan effort. What are their responsibilities? The sole responsibility for redistricting for the General Assembly, the State House, is the redistricting commission. They have sole responsibility. Legislature doesn't get to involve, uh, although they have members on the committee. Uh, but action is if the majority or four of the seven members, but each of two of the parties sign on by one September, they get a 10 year map, like the prior one have always been 10 years. But it requires that the two minority party members agree with it. That's the bipartisan dimension. If they don't agree with it, then a simple majority can pass a map, but it's only for four years and a kabuki dance has to be done again at that time to redraw the, the uh, map. The Ohio Redistricting, Redistricting Commission also has a role in redistricting for the congressional, and we'll get into that a little later. So congressional redistricting. General Assembly has primary responsibility. They get the first swing at the ball. Uh, it requires bipartisan map, map making, limiting the splits of the counties, as we've seen a lot of counties are split, a transparency, that's public hearings, public gets to participate, they get to propose maps, uh, and they get to testify at the public hearing. So how do the congressional districts work? Uh, Here's some criteria. At least 65 of the counties must be contained entirely within districts. Remember District 9, fragments of five counties wouldn't pass that test because they had no contiguous uh, counties contained in there. At least 18 counties can be split once or up to 18 counties. Currently we have 16 counties split once and up to five counties can be split not more than twice. In other words, three districts in a particular county. But there are no provisions for the situation currently in uh, Cuyahoga or Summit counties where you have five, four districts in that each of those two counties. 
And there are two of those that have four districts encroaching in it. So how, what is the process? This is my Gazenta chart. And we start, as I mentioned, General Assembly has the first opportunity. They can pass a 10 year map by 60% of the members provided that 50% of the two largest parties vote for it. In other words, if they get, uh, since there are 43 Democrats in the General Assembly, if they get 22 Democrats to sign on, they can pass a 10 year map. And that's the bipartisan dimension of it. If they can't, there comes your Ohio Election Commission, gets a second swing at the ball. And they can pass it by the same majority and include the same bipartisan participation of the minority party members. But they have to have that done by the 30th of October. They have about 30 days to do it. General Assembly uh, gets the second. If the, the commission doesn't do it, it goes back to the General Assembly. But if you'll notice that uh, if the commission passes it, it is adopted, period. It doesn't go back to the assembly, doesn't go to the governor, it's passed. That map is adopted. General Assembly gets a second uh, pass at it. Again, 60% of the members, but only one third of the minority party has to sign on. That's 15 members versus 22. So they have to find eight people that will go along with it. And it'll still be a 10 year map. But mm -hmm. failing that, the bipartisan result, the majority by a simple majority, the house can pass the map, adopt the map, but it's only for four years and they have to redo it in four years. But there are some additional criteria that's kind of nitpicking. We won't get into it. Okay, this is some of the things you can't do anymore. You look over there at Mercer County. I don't think I've ever been to Mercer, but it's divided into three chunks of dis three separate districts uh, Mr. Jordan has a bite out of it and a couple of other ones. Uh, that little uh, 16, you see that minor bridge to get up there to Cuyahoga County. Uh, and we mentioned Summit County, which is next to Cuyahoga. It won't work. Cuyahoga, Franklin and Hamilton could likely be in a single uh, district. Right now, looks like 780,000 people is about what each representative is going, each of the 15 representatives will be uh, representing. So, Census Bureau then threw a wrinkle in when they said, hey, the data won't be available till September 30th, the, the definitive data needed for redistricting. Mm -hmm. But just Today, I noticed in the Xenia Daily Gazette that there's a recent agreement between the state and the Census Bureau that they will provide the definitive data by August 16. This makes it possible, as provided the redistrict commission gets busy and the uh, state house gets busy. And this is a schedule. We have 98 days from today to get to the 10 year map for the Ohio uh, House and Senate. 98 days. That body has a hard time agreeing where to go to lunch in 98 days or if to go to lunch. So that's a tall order. And once they get the numbers in the middle of August, It'll be 50, less than 15 days to do it. So they need to start doing parametrics. You know, they can tell within 5% what the population is gonna be, what the demographics are today. And they could be drawing maps, 
working through the criteria, arguing, agreeing upon the criteria on how to implement it. But to my knowledge, they haven't even designated the two uh, or the four people that are to be appointed by the minority and majority members. So they've got some work to do. And then for the congressional districts, they have a little bit longer, but they have a lot to work to do too. And if you go on the website and look for schedule, you can't find anything scheduled for those people. It's disconcerting. Okay, as you know, you can't do anything without going to the court. But a couple of years ago, there was a case, common cause case, that went to the Supreme Court regarding gerrymandering. And the decision was, tisk, 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 gerrymandering is unfair. However, comma, it's not our problem. Legislature, local legislature has to fix it. Ohio legislature, by helping with those amendments passed, con constitutional amendments helped fix it. But if there is some court issue, the Ohio Supreme Court has what's called exclusive and original jurisdiction on the issues. In other words, the case goes direct to the Supreme Court. It doesn't go to the district court, doesn't go to the appeals court, it goes to the Supreme Court. And I'm sh they can't make the decision, they won't draw the maps, but they will, they're empowered to bounce it back to have it reworked. So what can you do today? What can we do today? We need to send emails, letters, postcards to the law, Ohio map makers, the General Assembly, and particularly the uh, redistricting commission to get them off their duff and get them engaged with this process. I would recommend visiting the fairdistrictohio.org website and tell you how to get informed. You can sign up for emails. You can join the speakers bureau and probably do a better job than I'm doing uh, or request for one, some other organization that you may think should be involved. You can res respect or request a, somebody to talk about it. There are cat map making training and facilitations and Kim can speak to that a little later. And then as I mentioned, uh, testimony uh, at the appro appropriate public hearing. Recommend get a postcard. Even I have sent a couple postcards. And on those, not a lot of room, you can't get too philosophical on them. But I ask three questions. One, how are you doing? We all know what the answer is. We're doing great. And then second question, how do you know? Well, it starts to bog down, you get a little humma humma. And the third question is, can you show the voters how you're doing? And about that time, they find something else to do because as far as I can see, they aren't making any progress and they have 98 days to do something. Okay, these are some of the timelines. Later this year, we should be seeing the map making competitions. People have an opportunity to submit, submit maps and then hearings. And I'd encourage people to participate in it. But today we have got to get uh, attention to the, the senators and representatives and have them get involved. Here are the resources. Again, start with fairdistrictohio.org and that'll lead you to where you need to go. Thank you, any questions? The floor is open. Thank you, Jerry. I will turn this back. Okay. In slow, so there we go. <laughs> Okay, the floor is open. Do we have any questions or comments? Don, you want to field this for us? I see Sue. Hi, uh, Jerry was talking about uh, it being referred to the Supreme Court. And I don't know whether that was the Ohio Supreme Court or the US Supreme Court. That was a US Supreme Court. That was a poor representative 
representation of Justice Roberts. And, and the US Supreme Court says, don't bother coming to see us about redistricting, talk to your legislature. Fortunately, Ohio is one of the very few states that has done something to pry, try to get some order in it. It took a lot of work and the league and, their, uh, and Common Cause had initiatives, had petitions out to come up with a constitutional amendment, but uh, the state house saw this train coming, jumped in front of it and passed a resolution that ultimately got on the ballot for the 15 and the 18 uh, amendments. Thanks. Um, I'm confused between the process for congressional districting and state redistricting. Yeah, uh, it is. I, little... I know you just went through it. Yeah. But can you give like a two sentence description of one versus the other? Well, to start with, uh, the uh, state house, that's the Ohio Senate and House, they are redistrict by the redistricting commission. Those seven individuals will make that decision. The State legislature, the state legislature doesn't get involved in that. The state house, only their representatives are on that, and they draw. You know, they're dealing with those 88 counties, uh, and will try to somehow uh, uh, map the population to fit that. And there are criteria. They will attempt to control to respect county districts. Let's take our district, or no, we, it's not a good idea, but you know, Green County is split. I don't know why it's split, but it's, you know, the line mist goes back and forth between the 73rd and the 74th. Some of that, if you're respecting counties, seems like you should have a little integrity in the counties. Now, on the US Congress, that start starts in the state house. The state legislators, those that august body of 132 individuals have an opportunity to do a bipartisan thing. They have some criteria, very similar criteria, but they are the, have the primary responsibility. And they, if they don't get it, then the redistrict commission gets a swipe at it. If they don't get it in time, then it goes back to the house, yep. okay. slight change. If they can uh, persuade eight Democrats to sw or swing over or a change, uh, they could pass it. Uh, so, but that is based on having only 15 representative this time versus 16 last time. So they've got to do something. So, in in your uh, gra your yeah graphic there about what I could do, one of them is uh, learn how to draw your own maps, and it sounds like part of the idea is to get a bunch of alternative options circulating, and not just wait for uh, the top to tell us what. What I'll defer be. to uh, Kim, who's been through their map facilitation uh, discussion. Kim? Yes, I've been working with uh, groups on, we've started with the community um, map making, and this isn't actually dividing the state up into districts, but this is um, community people coming together to talk about why their community should be kept whole. I live in Centerville, Ohio, and you may or may not know that even though Centerville is more or less in the middle of Washington Township, the, one of the graphics that Jerry showed us, Centerville's been pulled out of 
Washington Township, and we have a completely different um, representative than Washington Township does. There's absolutely no reason for that. We are a community of interest. We share the same library system, the same school system, um, the same park district. There is zero reason to do that, but it was beneficial to whoever to pull us out and put us with another group that would not be allowed at this time so we um so we're doing this all over um you know our area and we're looking for more people to get involved to do a community mapping of um of communities and i can send you that information now yesterday i went to um a program uh at the league office with a professor from the university of colorado um, who's a geography uh, professor, and she's working on, she's been studying redistricting in Ohio, and she jumped ahead to actually redistricting the entire state. So she showed us a couple of different programs that you can use. One is, is districter, and it's district with just an R on the end, and then the other, um, I, I can't remember the name of the other program, but I can put all this together and send it to Jerry and he can he can forward this to you but it allows you to start making maps uh, to your point Don so you can you know make these submissions and this is what fair district is going to be doing uh, in the fall is looking for people to um, make those those larger district maps so if anyone in the group is interested in doing uh, a community mapping session, you know, I'd be happy to uh, help you put that together. I, I knew you'd be interested, Don, so this is great. Excellent. Very good. Any other questions? This is a lot of complex information and I'm be yeah. honest with you, I'm not sure how much of it I actually was able to absorb. I think the big takeaway is that we need to do something though as soon as possible to preserve um, our voice in this process. And if it involves redistrict, I mean, I'm sorry, re, uh, facilitation of maps or getting in touch with our representatives to do that, I think that's the next important step in the process. It is a lot of, it, it is a lot of information. And so this is, I feel is kind of the, you know, just the, the, you know, the tip of the iceberg, if you will. Mm -hmm. And if you go back and, and read, you know, what fair districts has put together on their website, you know, it'll, it'll, you know, slowly, you know, start, you know, start filtering because it, it's, it is very, very complicated. And I think that's one of the problems, you know, they're trying to pull the wool over our eyes because it is so complicated, but we can figure this out and then we can, you know, can get involved. And the more people that know about this, the better off we're going to be. It looks like Carol has her hand up. You want to speak, Carol, please? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Will Fair Districts Ohio or League of Women Voters or a coalition of groups bring a map forward, a single map, so there's power and numbers behind it? And that's what they're that's what they're working on doing is people are just submitting maps, submitting maps, submitting maps, because they want to be able to, as what Jerry said take this to court, you know, if something, you know, crazy comes up again and say, no, this is, does, does, is not the letter of the law. We need, you know, we need fair maps. But will the, these organizations present a map? You know, I don't know that if there's going to be one specific map, I know right now, and, but we can find that we can get that question answered for you. I know that right now they're just looking for people to, you know, generate maps, generate maps. And I think they're really looking for people just to put some skin in the game and to hold their, um, their representatives accountable um, for what in the heck they're doing, you know, because the more people that know, you know, as I mentioned, we can't get the wool pulled over our eyes. Yeah. It seems to me that if in the end, there was one map submitted by multiple groups who are for fair districts, mm -hmm. it would put a lot of pressure on that right. commission to vary very far from that. Yes, yes. Rather than a lot of 
possibilities. Right, right. The last time there was a redistricting, uh, the local league commissioned uh, professors to do it. And they put forth three maps and they advanced them to Columbus. And when the map came out, it was none of the three. They were demonstrated to be, you know, meet various criteria, you know, be fair, be balanced, you know. And if you go on that Fair District website, there is, uh, Kim mentioned the districting map or program, computer program. You can play with it on that Fair mm -hmm. District Ohio map. You can download it. Uh, see what the parameters are, things like school districts or other community of interest uh, factors that you could, you know, should consider. But the big thing, people have got to get energized our elected officials. Mm -hmm. so email, write a letter, or postcard to your legislators and tell them to get busy. Hey, Don. Know, well, they're, they're one holding them accountable. Yeah. Just jumping in on that, Jerry, and and very likely uh, the League Women Voters, which is well adapted to this approach, and and Common Cause. I'm I'm hoping that you, the League's uh, lobby arm is getting one Democrat and one Republican or two Democrats and two Republicans as a team to make an appointment with each state representative. So there would be 99 state representatives would be met with and you can do different things, but since we're talking maps, just show them, you know, that, hey, this, this, your district could be this way, this way, or this way, and we want you to do it fair. Uh, there are very few lobbying efforts that are so thorough that they actually have citizens going and meeting with every representative and saying, we're watching and we care. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think people will get, could get, I, I'm gonna go to the website and see if I can play around. Uh, people could get excited because this is visual. This isn't just mm -hmm. listing policy arguments, although that's what's important. Uh, this has a visual angle that I think could get more people to step up. But, and I repeat what a version of what Carol Young said earlier, this is so fundamental. Absolutely. It dictates our life for the next decade. It really does. All right. Well, we have our work cut out for us. And so, so which of us are going to go meet with whatever his name is? <laughs> Who can like a true a citizen, whatever his name is. Who is it? You know, this is a Who is our district representative? We have that information, I'm sure. I should know, but I, I got to tell you, I don't remember. I apologize. Well, I defer to my township trustee. Ah, okay. I will, while we're talking, I'll come up with it. Okay. All right. That that would be the first, I asked the question because that seems like it's a logical first step of the person that we probably need to at least have a. Our state senator is Hackett. Hackett. Bob Hackett. Right. That's true. <laughs> yes, but our. Who who is our state rep? I'm very very embarrassed that I don't know that. Well, okay. Wasn't it Rick Perales last time? It was. Oh, he's county commissioner. Yeah, but but oh, it before is before that. Right. The fellow who replaced. Uh, I shouldn't be doing this while I'm trying to facilitate. That's fine. That's uh, fine. That is. What district are we in? 74th. 74th. I was going to say that's a quick Google. So, yeah, um, that's what I'm doing. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but seriously, um, uh, and I think it's important to be, uh, Jerry clarified that there's a difference between being formally registered as a Democrat or a Republican and being just a good voter. Um, it must be 73rd because Bill Dean comes up and yeah. I know Dean isn't ours. Dean's our sister district in Greene County though. But we're district 74. If it's, we're 74, it's, it's still- the south, uh, eastern part of uh, Green County. So you know what this tells me? They've effectively what? gerrymandered us. Yeah. <laughs> Got that We're part. split, and we don't even know where the districts start. Ryan Lampton. Okay, there you go. So we need Kim McCarthy. Kim McCarthy ran against him last yeah, time. We we need uh two two Republicans and two Democrats from Bellbrook, Beaver Creek. Fairborn or Yellow Springs, preferably not Yellow Springs, uh, to meet Why? with Brian Lampton to say, this is really important to us. And here are some examples of the kinds of maps that we would value. Is this something that could go to the Green County Democratic Party? to get two Democrats. Don't waste your breath. I'd, I would skip that well, step. Well, that's disappointing. I'm not gonna go there. Okay, all right, okay, fair enough. Uh, question. The point is to get, is to reach Brian Lampton, not right. the other stuff. Okay. Hmm. But back to the League of Women Voters, I would, Likely something ambitious is already underway, but Kim and Jerry, I would urge you to get them to set the goal of talking to everybody of, of, of a, a bipartisan visit to every candidate. Good idea. Uh, Sir I'm Lampton's. Does okay. anybody read that? Yes. Oh, okay. Might want to copy down a number. Right. Wait a minute, I'm trying to read it. My eyes aren't working for me here. I'm probably not steady. That's okay. Tell you what, Jerry, read the number off uh, if you don't mind. Okay, Lampton's phone number is 614 Six four four six zero two zero. Okay. Is there an and, email? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah. Lampton at Ohio doubt Ohio House dot gov. Okay. Okay. Stop and heck it is. Hackett at OhioSenate.gov. So I have a question uh, for Jerry or whoever it was that said it. Uh, why should the, the these people not be from Yellow Springs? That was Don that said that. Well, Don, Don said it, but because Brian Lampton, I'm guessing unless you're a Republican, we'll just dismiss you as from Yellow Springs. Well, the, what difference does that make? Well, we can do that, Don. I can go with you. <laughs> oh, I've been in meetings with him. He's perfectly amiable. I'm just talking about the visceral impact. I haven't bought any insurance from him, but I... I have known him for a while. S Sue, I, I don't really want to argue about <laughs> uh, psychological impact, but I, I'm thinking that uh, 
there are lots of Democrats in, in fact, there are more Democrats in Fairborn and Beaver Creek than there are in Yellow Springs, so. Okay, sounds reasonable. I was just curious as to, you know, how come our boy, I understand where our votes don't count, but I would think that in the future, our votes could count if redistricting is done fairly. So perhaps we would have more of a voice at this time than we've had in the past. I don't know. Hmm. That was an interesting comment. There are more Democrats He's just talking in number, the not percentage. Mm -hmm. Okay, but still, even that. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Hmm. But as I mentioned, in Greene County, 65% of people aren't registered with the party. Right. Mm. Yeah. Which seems like another task that getting people registered is. <laughs> well, that's with a party. Right, right. Well, Right, just getting them. Okay. Huh. So, um, Kim and Jerry, would would you repeat the the specific kinds of things that that you think would be helpful uh, for people to do? Uh, you know, we have a sort of a three month window of action. First of all, energize your elected representatives. Secondly, uh, be informed of public hearings and volunteer to be part of it. And don't just make one phone call to your representatives. You gotta keep on it. Be informed. When is a meeting? When is the next meeting? Uh, you know, what's the status? Uh, and there's nothing wrong with sending a card to the governor. He chairs the reelection committee. He should be involved. He manages to find some, you know, a couple hours a week to have his back a million uh, program. He should be able to spend a little time on this one because that depend, determines our future. Do you have anything, Kim? Yeah, I think the energize is what's most important. And then also just to, and, and telling other people about the opportunities, because there is some place for all of us to get involved. Maybe it is, you know, what all you really want to do is, is write the postcards, but maybe you want to, you know, become part of the speakers bureau. Maybe you want to, you know, draw, you know, a community map um, with a group. You, be on the transparency team. Um, you know, watch your, you know, I think, Don, you would be great on that transparency team. And through the, the through our committee, Laurel Kerr is heading that up. So I sent some information to um, Jerry that he can forward um, to someone on the group, and then you can um, distribute that. Um, the other group besides Districter is um it's called representable.org. And that's it. And I sent you the, the links for all of that. Play around on these, you know, um, map making web tools and, you know, start thinking about where you think the line should be drawn. There is something for everybody to do, whether it's the Speakers Bureau, the map making, or the transparency team. Pick something and do it because it is going to take all of us to um, you know, hold feet to the fire so we so we get what we um, what we deserve. So draw, drawing maps is the new online game. Exactly, exactly. I agree. Well, K Karen, do you see another other things we ought to talk about or mention? Yeah, you're disconnect. You're, you're, Karen, you're not. I'm sorry. I apologize. I forgot to read me, uh, unmute myself. I think identifying the six important steps that um, Kim just outlined, along with uh, Jerry, about our next steps as um, individuals 
to try and just really get the attention of our representatives and let them know our goal is to have fair maps and participate in any way that um, individuals are comfortable with doing that. I think that's the important takeaway for, for this discussion. I'll be very curious, I'm gonna watch this closely and I will be very curious at the end of the process, what actually has changed? Because again, this is a decade of time that we are looking at. We're going to be stuck with whatever we do or do not do for uh, 10 years. And that's a big chunk of time um, in, in our lives that are, is going to dictate who is going to represent us and, and how they're going to represent us. So the goal is then to have a voice. What, uh, it seems to me it would not violate our nonprofit organization status to forward to our email list uh, a, uh, shall we say, a, a, an objective or dispassionate list of possible action items to our whole membership rather than just those that have been on this? I think that's appropriate. And I think that's appropriate um, to distribute that community-wide. We can try and do that. We'll come up with a way of, of trying to get that um, I mean, out to a larger community. I don't know if that's going to involve the newspaper or, or what that would involve, but that sounds like an activity, yes. Because all it, what we're saying is use the laws we have put Absolutely. in place. We're Absolutely. not advocating any one design or one. Or one party over yeah. another. And, and that is the beauty of the League of Women Voters and Absolutely. Common Cause. It, they're both nonpartisan. Exactly. We just want everybody to be able to vote and everybody's vote to count. Absolutely. That is what most is it most important. If you want to vote for who is it, Lampert or whatever his name is, that's great. But you know, your vote, you know, nobody should be able to say to Jerry, your vote doesn't count. That right. is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. This is nonpartisan. So it should not conflict with any of your, um, with any of your um, donation staff. Exactly. exactly. We're not telling people how to vote. We are asking right. them who vote. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and we're asking them to be involved in the process of involved in the process Draw, drawing the lines right and that's what democracy is it's participatory exactly so. exactly exactly you're not going to be a, you're not going to observe on this one you're going to participate so but there's multiple ways to do it if you're not comfortable you know doing a, a speakers bureau presentation postcards transparency whatever you what use your strength whatever your strength is find it and use it Hey, 